then he said, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. Because I can't catch a break, guys? Yeah. Get them the fuck away from me. I can't, I can't be around those guys. People think, oh well, cleaning your room, that's just a cliche. It's like, yeah, really, eh? Just go ahead and try it. If people had any idea how powerful sleep is for healing from anything, and the fact that it's free. My mind is absolutely bulletproof, solid as a rock. Podcast. Podcast. Hello. Hello. How is everyone today? I'm good. I'm good too. That's it, everyone. That's everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, welcome back to another Fighting Fit podcast. We hope you enjoyed the rest of the podcast that you've listened to. That's why you're back again. And if this is your first podcast, you're very, very welcome. Um, whether you're joining us on video or you're joining us just with the audio, guys, we'll try and make things as easy to understand um, through the audio. All right, so the audio guys just listening on the audio um, will make things nice and simple and not make the visuals too dramatic in that way you're not missing out but there will be some visuals you never forget your first podcast that is all right, I was wondering, I was wondering. so today's podcast guys um as you might have taken away from the title is what do you do once you've finished a six week kickstarter so once you've maybe went from your previous bad habits and um, the place that you're at to move in six hard weeks of diet and exercise to basically get yourself to lose 5% body fat or 14 pounds. So where do we go from then? We've often heard of people, you know, going, well, what do you do because I can't sustain that way of living? Am I not going to gain all the way back and rebound to my old um, body fat or body weight? And the truth of the matter is, no, unless you eat an exorbitant amount of calories, you know, you eat too much and gain the weight back through food and lack of activity, you know, you shouldn't gain it all back. Um, if you went from a very, very low carb status back to a moderate or even a high carb stage, you might gain, you know, a kilo or two, depending on the amount of food you eat through water weight, because obviously a big part of carbs is a carbohydrate. So for every gram of carbs you have, you hold on to four grams of water. So it's very important to understand that when you do go from maybe a lower carb diet, um, or at least a moderate carb diet back to a, a higher carb, that you will gain some back, but it's obviously not body fat. It's obviously just an awful lot of water weight. And then again, if you're eating a uh, very low in, in sodium and salts, and salt back into your diet is gonna reflect in a um, softer appearance because again, you're gonna have less water, or you're gonna have more water now than you did before, and more salt, so you're gonna look that little bit softer, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's all body fat. So, with that said, what do you do once you're finished? We move you on to a flexible six week plan. All right, so it's gonna be a flexi diet. So it's gonna be still more of a step towards health and fitness and more of a step away from maybe a, a, what, what you call a, a normal life. You know, so the standard American diet or the standard Irish diet, um, which is, you know, takeaways two, three times a week, uh, cornflakes for breakfast, Nutella on toast, Pop tarts. You talking about yourself here? I'm just talking about myself. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much what I used to eat. No um, Irish person has pop tarts. No, I, I'm, I do them in in Duns and <coughs> Little and Aldi. Oh, maybe not Little and Aldi. Not Little. Do Duns and Tesco. Um, yeah. So, well, it's either that or you have the option of doing another Kickstarter. So, if you're not finished yet, I mean, like I said, the Kickstarter is extreme, but not as no it's not it's not grossly extreme it's literally weight loss to the nth degree you know um, it's basically just eating cleaner foods more whole foods cutting out sugar it's 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 more of what you're not eating than what you are eating it's it's more about moderating and tracking and being mindful than it is anything else no? i don't think it's too severe at all like it's it's rough it's roughly a 1000 calorie deficit per day but Again, like you're, you're still hitting your protein targets. You get your two or three portions of carbs a day. Your veggies are unlimited, so you can eat veggies until you can't stomach another morsel. Like it's not, it's not a, it's not a starvation diet. It's yeah. a, it's a, it's a structured diet to just basically teach you what, what food, what your plate should look like. Because some people think that even if they're eating healthy foods, their plate is. Generous. Twice the size of what uh, of what an actual portion for a normal human being should be. Some people eating strong man portions when they should be eating, you know, regular man portions, etc. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, no, I completely agree. I literally think that people don't know how to build a place, and that's essentially one of the the things that we give with the guys with the Kickstart guide. I'm sure if they, um, you just want to listen to the the Kickstart podcast, and um, there's all the information on that. But essentially, it's about plate building. You know, we've categorised foods into blue, green, uh, red, and yellow. Green's your veg, blue is your protein, red is your carb, and yellow is your fat. And essentially, it's your plate about three times a day, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner should have one of this, one of that, one of this, plus snacks, plus protein shakes. Um, and essentially, that's that's the height of it. You know, it's like, again, yeah. it's not it's not extreme, but like I said, normal people, standard Irish diet these days is two portions of carbs in every, in every, um, in every meal. You know, you probably have, you know, more than the recommended allowance of cornflakes. You don't have any, any vitamins or minerals for, minerals for your breakfast. You've no protein. You've no fats. Um, your snacking's erratic, and then you continue that cycle again. Sure. It's, like even if you look at like the serving size in a box of cereal, it's, they're all a serving is all thirty grams. And if you pour thirty grams into a bowl, you're literally going, "Where is it? Where is it?" Did you ever see the the little box, the little fun mix of, of yeah? Cereals? I used to love getting them when I was younger. That's a serving. Yeah, even when you're younger, you two. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be fighting for the for who gets the best too. That's, yeah, but like I said, so you'd have one and then you have another one. Yeah, yeah. or you'd have mixed the two, but yeah. you know. Yeah. But or if you're having if you're having a sandwich, you know, you have four slices of bread. You have two sandwiches. That's yeah. or, or if you're if you're that kind of person, oh, I don't eat that much. You know, it's like well, then you're a grazer. But like you said, if you don't eat that much, chances are you're quite a lean person. You know, you're, you're you might you might be soft. You might not be toned. I'm using air quotes guys for those who's just listening but like you know you might be you might be untoned because you don't take enough protein and you don't exercise and that's that's where you need um, a little bit more work like I said when you're looking to build muscle one of the things that I've noticed that people start struggling with is that they don't eat enough you know it's like and you know they don't move enough certainly they don't give their body enough enough volume of, of stress and they don't eat enough calories to kind of to build the muscle that they want to build you know it's like if you look at bodybuilders they eat for a living if you look at strong men they eat for a living now obviously if that's not where you want to be but it's it's a move towards that you know it's like if you want to build muscle if you want to build your body you are now a bodybuilder you know it's like I had so many people saying oh I don't want to be a bodybuilder it's like well do you want to build some muscle to your body yes well then you are somewhat at some level a very very um, novice bodybuilder and like I said you might just stay at that level forever but that's where you're at you know it's like so we kind of have to change our thinking and change our, our mindset towards um, eating food and eating starting to eat food for fuel and starting to train not to punish yourself but to train muscles and train specifically for you know building up your biceps if that's what you're looking to do build up your core if that's what you're looking to do or just train to keep fit if that's again what you're looking to do depending on what your goal is um, so here at Fighting Fit after you've done the Kickstarter challenge, let's talk about the Flexi Diet Plan because again, if you want to do the Kickstarter again, boom, you know what to do. So, for those of you guys watching, um, we've got a vegan nutrition guide, all right? So you can take up the vegan option, all right? And again, so in this book, we basically have um, recipe ideas with calories, carbs, proteins, and fats, all done out for you with lots of whole foods, you know? So again, is coconut, oil better than um, fry light. In some aspects, no, in other aspects, yes. In some aspects, it's gonna have more calories, the coconut oil is, that is, but it's also gonna have more vitamins and minerals because it may be more of a whole food and the other one's more of a, a, a processed food. So it's gonna be more whole foods. And again, your coaches will assign you calories and macros. So we'll assign you 1600 calories for talk's sake and then the appropriate carb, a protein and fat ratio that's designed for you and then what you can do is you can take photos of your meals and send them to a coach and we'll kind of give you feedback on it or we will um, give you my fitness pal which is a, a an app on your phone to track your food and create a food diary and essentially that will educate you on what's in what foods exactly down to the the, the calorie exactly down to the protein um, carb or fat gram all right and then we can build from there and it's basically just about staying consistent and tracking your food and knowing what you're eating and know what's going in your body and sticking to your numbers hashtag know your numbers so basically the flick <clears throat> the flexible diet in the program is more of a when we talked about the kickstarter challenge we're saying it's more of a 1000 calorie deficit so depending on where you are after the kickstarter challenge if you've met if you've reached your goal or if you're kind of a little bit, you've still got a little bit to go, but you're you're not 100% interested in doing another Kickstarter challenge, we, the Flexible Dieting Program can be 
uh, for people that have hit the goal, a maintenance calorie goal, mm-hmm. or for people that are still a little bit further away from their goal, we kind of recommend maybe a 500 calorie deficit per day. So that would work out at about a pound per a pound of fat loss per week, as opposed to two pounds per week on the Kickstarter challenge. So again, you're still you can still be in a calorie deficit and still eat more calories and introduce more foods that you weren't eating in the Kickstarter challenge. If it kind of helps you to stick to your goal a little bit more, I like the, we we like to call it. It's more of an if it fits your macros kind of program where it's like. Yes, you need to be eating your whole whole grains, your kind of your <clears throat> your protein, your kind of good quality protein sources, your good quality fats. But again, when you figure out what your calorie goal is and what your macros are, you can play around with it a little bit. You can start introducing foods that maybe that you would consider a treat that still come in come inside your mac on your calorie goal and help you to still lose weight while actually being able to maybe enjoy yourself a little bit more than you might have been beforehand but again it's not a eat shite food all day every day and then just stay within your calories it's a kind of eat the foods that you're supposed to eat and then introduce kind of little treats here and there maybe treat on a tuesday a treat on a thursday just some little kind of thing like a bar of chocolate a packet of crisps something that you wouldn't have been able to have in the kickstart challenge but still helps you to lose fat yeah so essentially um like i said if you've got for talk's sake, 150 grams of carbs for the day, you might have eaten 100 grams worth of fruit, vegetables, and whole grains, and you've got 50 grams of carbs left, you might opt for a uh, scum, a uh, croissant, you maybe go for a bowl of cereal, maybe a slice of toast. Why? Because that's just, that's what people do. You know, it's like, um, I know myself here, every time I pick up a croissant or a, a Chinese or something like that, you know, everyone, everyone's jaw drops to the floor. It's like, you know, it's like, I don't eat clean all the time. I don't think anybody eats clean all the time. But the thing about it is, it's like it's scheduled on clean eating, you know, or at least you operate within a balance for 80% of your life or 70% or 60%, depending on what speed you want to go and what your goal is and what season of life it is for you. But the idea being then that obviously you're going to have cheat days. Obviously, you're going to want that little bit of sugar. Obviously, you're going to want that takeaway. And again, if that's your thing, let's go for it. Have at it. But make sure it's not... Um, working against your goal and make sure that you're in control because at the end of the day it's like if you are fat and you don't want to be fat well then maybe you've got a problem because if you don't want to be but you still are well then maybe you've got a discipline issue maybe you have a, an, an addiction to some kind of behavior maybe you've got just bad habits maybe you just got a bad routine maybe you're in a rut maybe you lack discipline maybe you lack inspiration or motivation you know it's like but for those of you guys who are on the right track to keep yourself sane you're going to need treats as that, you know, the, the, as I said, the donkey and the carrot comes to mind, you know, you're chasing something, like I said, and food is what does it for you, 100%, you know, it's like, if that's what motivates you, it's about knowing yourself, and learning what your drivers are, learning what's going to keep you sane, knowing what your breaking point is, and that's what the Flexi Diet diet Plan is all about, the Kickstarter is the opposite, the Kickstarter is you saying, actually, regardless of what you want, I am going to stick to this plan, so regardless of whether or not I want to have a Chinese, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna allow myself that because I've made a commitment and I've put a bet of 100 euro on myself that I am gonna to stick to this plan. And that's the idea behind the Kickstarter. We're gonna, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put myself against the grindstone. I'm gonna work hard regardless. You know, it's like I'm gonna make the extra sacrifice. I'm gonna go the extra mile. That's not sustainable forever over the span of your life yeah that might be sustainable for six weeks and what we figured out for the kickstarter is it's not even sustainable for people for six weeks so it's about understanding you know we need we have work to do um and the flex if the kickstarter is not working for you um it's because you're not sticking to the plan you know it's because you need more of a flexible approach because your discipline is just not at a level right now that you can maintain that for six weeks but what i have found is you know People in the, in the Kickstarter, especially, you know, the more muscle mass you have and the bigger you are, the more calorie output you have, people have been slacking off the Kickstarter and still getting results, you know? Definitely. No, but if you haven't hit 14 pounds by the end of the, the guide that we gave you, it is literally a case of you didn't hit 10,000 steps seven days a week for six weeks and, and above, 7,000 is the minimum. You didn't eat in the 1,000 calorie deficit every single day, seven days a week for six weeks. And if you, if, if you didn't hit your goal, guys, you know, that's the harsh reality of it. And I think, again, you said knowing your numbers is really important. Like, <clears throat> let's just say you need to eat 2,000 calories a day 
seven days a week to lose a pound of fat so that that would that would mean that your body is burning 2500 calories per day and you're eating 2000 so that means you're basically again you're in your 500 calorie deficit per day and that's one pound of fat per week of fat loss it's important to know that it's important to know with the kind of flexible diet and approach using my fitness pal what the amount of calories in each uh, kind of sort of food do you like to eat what, what kind of calories are in all those sort of foods like let's just say in order to hit your kind of your protein goal your kind of your your five day your fruits and vegetables and all that sort of stuff that brings you to say let's just say 1600 calories 1700 calories for the day it's important to know that you can still use your extra 300 calories whatever way you see fit as long as it isn't overdoing it like let let's say you're the sort of person that likes to have a chinese on a friday night you could kind of take a couple of hundred calories away from your from your during, from your Monday to Friday. Let's say you even cut it back to 1,800 calories Monday to Friday. Then you'd have an extra thousand calories to, to kind of play around with on on a on a Saturday evening or a Friday evening. It all works with your numbers. Just FYI, guys, most people's Chinese is over a thousand calories. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to say about kind of people that are the sort of person that likes to get kind of like a like a big kind of blowout meal every week. If you're having a kind of a Chinese or a chip shop takeaway, it's very difficult to track something like that. I think um, if you're going to opt for having some sort of big takeaway, the kind of the big chain kind of takeaway restaurants are easier to track because you're able to find the nutritional information available online. Like if you actually kind of let's just say your average, we'll say McDonald's meal for for an example, you enter your average McDonald's meal into your into my fitness pal, and even though you haven't eaten that much food, you realize that it's actually like twelve to fifteen hundred calories that one meal, and like that's just McDonald's. If you go to the Chinese, it's so much more dense, it's more greasy, it's everything. You could end up having three thousand calories without even knowing about it in the one meal. That's why. Kind of, you have to be, you have to be mindful about what you're eating. Even if, like people say, like, oh, all I did was have my have my cheat meal on Friday night. I was so good throughout the six days of the week. You have to look at the numbers of your calorie burn for the week versus your calorie calorie kind of um, calories in versus calorie out for the week. Like if you're on an 1800 calorie, if you're on 1800 calories Monday to Saturday, and then you have a cheat meal on Sunday, you can still go over your calories in one meal depending on what you eat. And here's a, and here's how you know if you did it, your weight's up. Exactly. Like, it's, it's nice and simple. It's just going, oh, okay, I actually, there's something here that I got wrong. Either I'm underestimating how much I'm eating or I'm overestimating how many calories I'm burning. And that's not a criticism. It's literally just going, oh, okay, I got something wrong. Let's change it. And again, if you don't want to change it, that's 100%. But the fact of the matter is, know your numbers. You know, it's like the numbers don't lie. The numbers are there. It's, it's, it's very, very, it's very, very easy to tell. And like I said, if we break down the cars, it's like if you have a two liter Range Rover, you know the mileage, you know the fuel, you know the distance that you're going. You know, it's like this is this is primary school stuff. It's like you can literally track how many gallons or liters of fuel you're going to burn over a period of distance, and then you'll know when you need to top up again. Like that, it's just, your body is the exact same. You know, like I said, with information about people varying ten to fifteen percent, and like I said, that's maybe one of the reasons why your numbers aren't working. Maybe you're ten, fifteen percent outside your margins on how much you're burning and how much you're taking in. And it's very, very important to understand that. You know, well, again, women, women have their menstrual cycle to contend, to contend with as well. So, you know, you're gonna get a little bit of variance there. That's why we wanna look at a general trend of three weeks, four weeks especially, to get a, a good look at the four, the, the four week cycle. But like I said, taking into consideration if week one versus the next week one, if your weight's not down, you're getting something wrong. You know, it's like don't slam your head against the same brick wall over and over again and, and, and repeat that for a year. If anybody's ever seen the show, the show A Year to Sit, Change My Life or uh, My 600 Pound Life, you know, it's like stop underestimating the amount of change. If you are two stone overweight, you could literally be an ideal weight in two months. Like generally, if you're four stone overweight, give it four months. It shouldn't take a year. It shouldn't take you six years. You know, it's like it, li- it should literally take you less than a year to lose four, four stone if you have the numbers right, if you have your discipline right. But obviously, it's going to be more of of an extreme move away from your life. But if you don't change, nothing's changing. And if nothing's changed, you haven't changed. Just understand that. And it's it's one of the most freeing things you'll ever understand that if nothing has changed in your life, there is a good chance that you are not paying attention to what's happening with your numbers. You know, and a little bit of routine and a little bit of schedule and a little bit more information will, will really stand to you. And that's one of the benefits of the Kickstarter because it's that high accountability program. One of the benefits of the Flexi Dieting program is that, like I said, you take a step back from being as restrictive or, or structured 
and you can be a little more flexible, you can live your life if fat loss isn't your number one goal. But if fat loss is your number one goal, but um, your, your, your day is not prioritized around fat loss, you know, family is your number one priority, but you're trying to say that fat loss is your number one goal, you know, it's like, well, those things just don't equate. And that doesn't make it, make it wrong. It just means that obviously family is your number one priority and family is happiness and cohesion within your unit is obviously your number one goal. And fat loss is actually goal number two. And that's one of the reasons why it's not happening. And maybe for toxic, your social life is actually taking up a large number of your resources. Well, your social life is your priority. Fat loss isn't your priority. Um, bodybuilding isn't your priority if it's not happening. If it's not your number one priority, if the first thing you do when you wake up is not think, how am I gonna structure my day to hit that goal today? Well then that is not your, your number one goal or your priority. You're not driven towards it correctly if the results aren't speaking for themselves or if you're not constantly trying to find out information and chop and change and organize and restructure and find the balance that will get you going at the pace that you know you need to go to hit your goal by the deadline that you've, that you've set up. It is important to remember that we are, uh, we are adults after all. Like there's no, well, we, I kind of, it's, it's frustrating when people come in and they don't know where they've gone wrong because, you know, like I know when I've gone wrong, what happened? Like you, that little voice in your head that says, you've probably gone wrong there is always going to be right. Like, so, so some people genuinely tune that voice out. I know. Like if, if, if you're, if you're the sort of person that's kind of, that's kind of, oh, <laughs> oh, we've all done it. I've done it as well. Like if 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 I kind of like if I had a bad if I had if I had a bad weekend, like you know that you've disappointed someone, you might try to lie about it. But it's like if you can't lie to someone who knows better. But it's, it's not even that. It's like lie, do what you want. It's like I mean, it's it's your it's like who like who are you it's your trying, money. Who are you trying to fool? You know, it's like you're only kid. You're only caught in yourself. You know, it's like generally like whether whether I just speaking as a coach. You know, it's obviously I care and obviously I want you to do well. But it's like if you come in with your numbers to me, it's like I'm gonna go home and feel good about myself and my priorities and 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 and, and my life. You know, is it this is just you know it's like you are uh, you are training for yourself. You know, your coach is here to guide you. If you lie to your coach. It's like, you know, it's like, fair enough, you, it, that's just the game of whether or not you got away with the lie, but it's like you're no further towards your goal or not. You might have saved a little bit of face in the, in the short term, but you're not, you're not doing yourself any favours. You know, it's like, Jamie, it's like I, like, I would rather somebody coming into me going, you know what it is, my discipline is pretty shitty this week. I still haven't managed to get the hang of it again, and I'm really struggling with that, Brown. And, you know, this weekend, there's pints with the lads, I just couldn't say no, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm grazing, I'm snacking, because then we can start talking about actual, actual constructive feedback. Just you know, be honest with yourself. You know, it's like, because now, now we're talking about, you know, we've got, a, we've, got a, we've got a flawed relationship. Like, I don't know one relationship that works that's based off lies. You know, it's like, if you start lying to me, it's like, well, we don't have much of a relationship, do we? You obviously don't trust me enough to kind of give you the right, right, right advice. Um, you know, it's like, people are afraid of a little tough love. You know, it's like, like it's, 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 it's my job as a coach to tell you when you're going wrong. And it's also my job as a coach to put my arm around you and give you a hug when things are tough. You know, but it's like, that's my job to, to know the difference. And it's your job to be honest and upfront and we can work through it together as a team. Exactly. It's kind of like the teacher-student relationship. It's like, we want the best for you and we will absolutely try our hardest for you. But if you're not kind of giving it and back, like... We're at the end of the day, we're still getting paid. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it is. I'll, I'll tell you what it is more than anything else. Is like, it's disappointing. You, you, will, you can spot the slackers. Like, I, like I, I said, like, like what, what, we what, both what, know right now who the slackers are. Like I said, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not a personal attack on your, on your character or on your personality. We still like you all as people. You're all very lovely. Every man, I don't, I don't have a member here that I, that I, that I'm not fond of. Because, because I, I, I under, I understand. Like, I, like I understand. I'm currently going through the diet struggle. You know, I'm currently. Me too. We all are moving towards my own goals. So I understand. I just, I don't appreciate dishonesty. You know, like, it's, like, I, it's just, it's just hard. It's hard to coach. I know if I have, like, just if I take my own example, I know if I have a bad week, I can't come in here and lie to Brandon about it because he's a. Um, obviously we have a little bit more personal relationship so he has no problem being more cutthroat than he is with you guys but like if I come in here let's just say I had a Chinese and Sunday I come in here and say oh and I Brandon and ask you oh, what happened to you and I'm like oh I don't know I just kind of I thought I did everything right and I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm confused he'd be like you know what you did wrong why are you saying this I, well I would expect and again a little bit different because I would expect now at this stage he's a professional exactly and if he didn't know where he went wrong just we've got a big pro- we've got a, a completely different problem but the, 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 the fact of the matter is it's like you know, it's like, 
if you if you genuinely don't know, it's very possible to be burying your head in, head in the sand. You know, it's like, and that's not a great place to be. It's not a great style to live your life. But we digress a little bit from the from the, the central point of this, guys, which is, you know, we want you to lose weight and we want you to lose weight sustainably, right? And some people, they take a maintenance approach as a foot off the gas approach. And that's not what a maintenance approach is because one of my favorite quotes is, a, it's an Alice in Wonderland quote and it's, you know, here you have to run as fast as you can just to stay in the same place. You know, it's like yeah. if you're not busting your ass for maintenance, chances are you going backwards. You know, if you're not, if you're not moving forward, you know, it's like, it's like almost like, it's almost like life is on a slope. You know, it's like if the gas is not on, you're rolling backwards. You know, that sort of way. And it's literally a case, it's like you're, you're fighting everything, you know, it's like, and especially this day and age. It's a losing battle. We're fighting weight loss because the world is so bloody cozy. It's so easy to sit down all day. It's so easy to overindulge indulge in calories. And we really need to start switching on. And again, guys, if your priority is weight loss and you let a coach know and set a goal, no problem. If you sign up to a challenge, expect that little bit of extra accountability. And if you don't, if you want to take, uh, if you want to take the, the, the gas off, um, or the foot off the gas, it's like let a coach know. You know, it's like we've got, we've got no problem with that either. Again, it's 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 all, it's all it's your life at the end of the day. But what I would advise is setting a goal always, always set a goal and always be moving towards it. Because if you don't set a goal, you can find yourself uninspired, unmotivated, and falling into a rut. I think not having a goal is probably one of the worst things you can do. Like it's, I like to say like so for people that are kind of like they're stuck in a rut. Uh, I think the main motiv- well, the main motivator for me is mortality. Like, I don't want to die. <laughs> I want to be alive. I want to live until I'm 90-something years old. I don't want to be blimmin... I don't want Sean to be 90 and me dead at 60 because I couldn't get my diet together. Um, and I think that's probably a, a, powerful, a powerful motivator for a lot of the members, kind of their kids. Like, um, they want to see their kids grow up to have their own kids and they want to be around for all that, but they just can't seem to get out of this rut of what they're currently doing it's just it's 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 sad as well to to see it happen but it's if you're not if you, if you can't be honest with us about what about that struggle that you're having then we can only do so much like we will always stand here and help you and give you the advice that we can give and support you and put our arm on your shoulder we'll always be here to do that but we can't we can't Take your hand. For you. We can't take your hand away from your mouth. We can't. We're not going to follow you around Tesco when you're doing mm-hmm. your shopping. We're not going to be sitting there when we're not going to be standing in your kitchen when you go in for a snack at the fridge at night. Like you have to. It's a. It's a. It's a win-win relationship. Like we're gonna. We can give you, and we always will give you as much as you possibly can. But if you're not giving it back, then it's very hard to to help you. You have to help yourself. You, you, you literally can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped. And exactly. If you don't want to be helped, it's because you're, 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 there's something you're getting out of your current behavior. And whether it's comfort or whether it's pleasure through eating, whatever, whether it's pleasure just through sitting down on the couch after a long, hard day at work, whether it's you know, you know, going for that little bit of extra ch- chocolate because you're tired because you know, the kids are just so, so hectic and busy all day that you only get a little, a little treat in the evening. I, I challenge you to enter into this beautiful relationship with yourself where you start challenging yourself this little bit. You take on this journey of growth, self-discovery, and, and listening to daily motivation. You know, it's like we're constantly just listening to successful people, understanding the template that's laid out in front of us. You know, we've all seen that inspirational video of the guy in a wheelchair who, you know, he got into an accident and now he's a bodybuilder. Now he's a fitness inspiration where at one stage his legs didn't work and now he's doing push-up with his hands with the, the wheelchair above his head. You know, it's like, it's like there's, there's a reason that you find that so inspiring because somehow deep, deep within your body, there's, there's an urge to do something incredible. You know, it's like we all love the Rocky movie. There's somebody who, who came from nothing and, and against all odds was able to defeat the world champion. You know, it's like I, I remember... Um, um, going to a, a festival, Wellfest, and there was this guy in it, and he got a back injury or a knee injury, and he was basically told, as part of recovery, to sit on the yoga ball and try and just stay balanced on the yoga ball. And he took it to that extreme, and he got he got to do it, and then eventually his next one was he sat in it and then managed to roll onto his knees from his butt, and then managed to roll from his butt to his knees up onto his feet, and he could balance standing up on a yoga ball. Mm. You know, it's like. He, he, he didn't just stop at the bare minimum. He took it and, and became professional. He became an expert at it to the point whereby, you know, athletes walking back, passing at Wellfest couldn't do it. And at one stage, you couldn't sit and balance on a ball. You know, there's something really inspirational about that. And it's like, 
that's the journey that we can go all, all go on. You know, if you can't cook at the minute, there's no reason why you couldn't, you know, in one year's time, in six months' time, have all your friends and family around and cook them a meal that would really impress them, you know, that, that and that you'd be proud of. You know, it's like that's that's growth. That's what life is all about. It's all about coming from a place that you're not happy with and, and, and developing and and growing in, and stretching yourself and, and going through the, the difficult and the, the, the hardships. Like any job that or any fitness journey, it's like we all see the result. We all see the pro. We all see the the, the, the the magnificent inspiration at the end. But what that looks like on a day to day basis is so boring. It's Consistent. Like, you know, it's boring. It's like nobody like nobody cares about you. You know, prepping your meals. Nobody cares about you drinking four protein shakes a day. Nobody cares about you coming in and going for a run or going for a walk when everybody else is just doing the same old same old. Nobody really cares, you know, it's like and nobody wants to see it either. And because we don't see it and because people don't share it, nobody does it. And it's like that's what makes a difference. So I literally challenge it. It's like get the little things right. If you get your little things right, that's what paints the big picture. You know, it's like Albert Einstein sitting there trying to figure out the equation to change all equations. It's like it was him sitting there with a pen and paper, falling asleep, taking naps you know, going out for a walk, taking a bit of fresh air, that's really what did it, you know, so it was that constant just sitting down, grinding at the grindstone every single day, that bodybuilder you see who's maybe not pumped full of steroids, and even if he is, you know, got there through eating chicken fillets, eating his broccoli, eating his rice, five to nine times a day, doing two, three sessions, doing it rep by rep, listening to the music, driving the same drive, walking the same walk, eating the same foods, consistently, consistency, that is the key. Problem is people are consistently inconsistent. Consistently inconsistent. But again, let's just talk about let's talk about the flexible dieting program. So again, if you decide to be on the flexible dieting program, we'll be given we will give you a calorie goal based on your your height, your age, your weight, and your activity level. Okay guys, so if you're the sort of person that would be um, kind of not moves not moves an awful lot or lightly active, you can't we'll be giving you a there's a there's a lot of, there's a few formulas that go towards I won't mention them now because we have a we have a course coming that will explain all that sort of stuff. I won't go into massive detail. Basically, just depending on your on your on your activity level and all those sort of things, you be given a calorie goal from one range to another range. And depending on your goal, if you want to lose weight, gain weight, or stay the same, you'll be given maybe a maintenance goal, a calorie, a 500 calorie surplus, or a 300 calorie surplus, depending on if you want to gain a little bit of muscle, maybe you want to gain maybe a pound, half pound a week, or if you want to lose a pound or half pound a week, you'll be about in about a 500 calorie deficit per day. So we'll give you your calorie goal, then we'll give you a macro goal. So the, the recommendation for macro for your protein goal is 0 0.7 grams of protein to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So Let's just say you weigh 200 pounds, you should be eating about 170 grams of protein to about, what is that, to about 220 grams of protein, something like that. Or, not, let me see. Yeah, rough numbers. Rough yeah, numbers. Exactly. You should be, well actually, we'll make it even simpler. If you weigh 100 I think the, I think the rock eats about 220 grams of protein a day. We'll do it, we'll say, if you weigh, let's just say you're a very small person, you weigh 100 pounds, you should be eating between 70 and 120 grams of protein a day. Again, just, yeah, exactly. And an awful lot of that extra protein, it's like, again, science says after a certain period, there's no point in eating extra protein. I've seen a different result, but I've also seen the exact same result. Like I said, just do what works for you and as long as you're moving in the right direction. If you're eating 70 grams of protein, you're not gaining much muscle, maybe you need 120 grams, maybe you're not tracking your food um, properly, but it's just about, again, trial and error. Find what works for you. Maybe 70 grams isn't enough protein for you. Maybe you're a big meathead, you love meat. You know, it's like, so bump up the numbers. Maybe, you know, 70 grams is a struggle. Well, tough for you. You're gonna have to make a move in the right direction or you're just not gonna hit your goal. Again, it depends on your own on your own kind of goal. Like, let's just say you weigh 100 pounds, 70 is the minimum. Like, I can't I can't offer you any less than 70. You need to hit 70. And then 120 is is your personal preference. I, get, I, uh, I like the higher, higher protein approach specifically because it's more satiating because your body basically takes more time to break it down. So you're burning more calories through the digestion process, breaking calories down, and also you're full of a longer because it takes longer to digest. So that's why I think people like the higher protein approach. And studies show that people who eat a higher protein diet are leaner and have more muscle mass. Exactly. That's like, just so sure. We've, we've all seen that photo of the kind of, like all over Instagram, like the girl who her first photo says, 
120 pounds and she's kind of skinny fat like kind of got love handles or whatever and the second photo says like 130 pounds in like a like a year later and she's lean kind of abs coming through toned all that sort of stuff it's basically because that's so true actually that was a point that i was kind of sitting with the tip of my tongue on this the whole time it's literally like people keep getting obsessed with weight loss it's like weight loss is not the overall arching goal. It's like maybe even fat loss isn't isn't the best goal in the world. It's like maybe you just have a nutrition goal. Maybe you need to eat more and exercise more. It's like, you know, sometimes, you know, more is less and less is more, depending on who you, who you talk to and depending on who you are and what direction you want to move. But, you know, don't get obsessed with fat loss. You know, it's like I said, a six pack isn't the end of the world. But if you want a six pack, you should probably move towards getting a six pack. If you want big guns or thick thighs or big booty, whatever it is, it's like you should be making the appropriate moves to, 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 to get there. And that doesn't always look like less food. That doesn't always look like being less percent body fat. And sometimes, you know, it's like you hear the, the common bulk and shred seems to work well for people. You know, focus on one thing at a time. You know, why don't you eat lots of food and train plenty, check your results as you're going, making sure that you're building more, build, build more muscle and you're happy with your performance. And then after a while, then do a six week shred and something like that and just see kind of, how you look, you know, so you, you focus on building muscle so that we're not worrying too much about, you know, macros and calories and nutrients and you're trying to go for the, the celebrity approach of eating eight chicken fillets and broccoli and rice a day and you're, you're building muscle and you're staying lean and you're looking like Zac Efron in, in bloody Baywatch, you know, it's like, if that's what you want to do, no problem, but it's like, it's probably going to be easier if you just, you know, approach it, a flexible diet and a plan where you eat. A uh, moderate to high level of carbs, a moderate to high level of protein, train very regularly, consistently, hit your muscles with good form and volume, train the muscles, and then before Ibiza or before your summer holidays, before you're going down to the swim pool, you know, enter a four to five week shred and just start going into that calorie deficit and start moving towards. You can't live your life in a calorie deficit. You know, and when you try and live your life in a calorie deficit, you will end up swinging from a calorie deficit to a binge, to a restrict to a binge, restrict or binge, and it's just this constant cycle, it's not enjoyable at either end. So it's about finding that balance um, for your life that's enjoyable, sustainable, um, and most of all, that you're moving towards your goal. Understand that the, the world works in seasons. You have spring, summer, autumn, and winter. I'm glad I got all them right. Um, you know, in winter, winter is not the time to be planting your seeds. Your seeds should be planted by winter. You know, you, you know it's not even the time to harvest in winter. That's what autumn's for. You know, in spring and summer, we start plant. In spring, we plant the seeds. In summer, we let the seed grow. We germinate. We go through the pro process. We water the plants. You know, it's like you don't dig it up every five minutes and see, is it working? Is it working? Is it working? You trust the process. You, you, the foundation's laid, and now you just work through it. You be consistent with the process. Autumn, we see what we brung, and then next year, winter, we go inside, we enjoy whatever it is that we were supposed to do, and then next year, we get right what we got wrong last year. We learn from what we got wrong and then we move forward and we do it all again. Exactly, so again, moving on to your your kind of, uh, after you've, had, you've got your protein goal, which is zero, uh, again, about 0 0.7 to 1.2 grams of of body weight, you then have your carbohydrates and your fat. So, depending on, on what you like to do, if you are a high fat lower, you like to have eggs, you like to have avocado, you're that sort of person, then you can opt for a higher calorie, you're, you can offer a higher fat goal than a carbohydrate goal. If you're a sort of person that just absolutely loves rice, you love potatoes, you can't get enough of them, you can be the sort of person that loves your higher carbohydrate goal. Again, once you have your once you have your protein goal, whatever, car, whatever calories are left, you can delegate them either to moderate carb, moderate fat, low fat, high carb, high fat, low carb, whatever you want to do, as long as your calories add up at the end of the day. So there's four calories in a gram of carbohydrates and there's nine calories in a gram of fat. So it is up to you to use your MyFitnessPal app to delegate them calories out accordingly. As long as they add up to your calorie goal at the end of the day, you can fill them up with whatever of carbs or fats you like. Again, it's all down to personal preference. As long as you're hitting your protein, and then you're also getting your fruit and your vegetables and you're not going for kind of the chocolate and the ice cream for your carbs and fats you're going for kind of something at least half healthy that is fine by me just stay within your calorie goal and hit your protein and just understand that you're always going to look more shredded on a low carb diet you just have less carbohydrate you have less water so if you're looking more if you want to get leaned out low carb is the way to go to start getting that nice shredded look or you're probably looking at a, a, a nice heavy calorie deficit
if you want to look if you want to look shredded shredded yeah low carb is a, is a good way to go but i just from personal experience i find that low carb is difficult but yeah long term again right, long, long term unless you've got crazy discipline and you 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 found a diet that works for you is well balanced and good flavor and it's high fat you know carbohydrates are probably going to be the most enjoyable approach but just understand you know you're always going to look more shredded if you know what's that saying no carbs before marbs that's exactly it's kind of like if you're in the if you're in the kind of the the flexible edit program and you're not you're not looking to get like a six pack out of it i think carbohydrates are the way to go just personally from experience and also performance i feel like i feel like i perform better when i got carbs in my system rather than fats but then again when you're coming to that kind of coming into the summer season again you might want to offer maybe jumping off the flexible program and jumping onto the kickstarter challenge for a couple of weeks or not actually you don't have to do the whole kickstarter challenge but jumping onto the kickstarter challenge approach where you kind of you're more structured you know exactly um you know, you know you're on your lower carb diet, you know exactly what you need to do to get that kind of six pack, six pack stage. But again, six pack, is, uh, six pack isn't sustainable forever, unless it's like, six pack, yeah, like abs are, abs are sustainable, but Zac Efron and Baywatch isn't sustainable. That is like, if you ever hear a celebrity talk on a, on a, on a talk show about what they, what they ate to get in the shape of the role they were in, all they say is, loads of chicken, loads of broccoli, working out twice a day, blah, 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 blah. Like, yes, if that's what you want to do and that's the life you want to live, yeah, that's cool. Do that, that do do you, yeah, do what you want to do. But I find that somebody that takes that approach, if they do it for an eight, for a long, long time, it'll just end up rebounding. And that's why I like to yeah, kind of- For the average them. person. Yeah, for if- For the average it, person with, with, with a family and friends and a relationship and a social life, that's not going to be the way to live. For the average person, the males, average sub 20, sub 20% body fat for a male. It's not sub 20% body fat, it's healthy, it's not gonna get. You're not gonna have a six pack, but you're gonna be. You're gonna. You're gonna look. You you look reasonably well, and you'll live a good life. You look good in a shirt. Yeah, exactly. You might even look good with your shirt off, depending on depending on your body composition. That's but if you want to have a six pack, then you're gonna have to obviously take the steps to get to where you want to go. But at the, at the end of the day, it's all about being happy. Be happy in your own skin. Like I said, if you're if you're generally happy at fifty percent body fat, all the power to you. No problem at all. There's no judgment. But if you've got a goal and you're genuinely not happy. You got some you got some work to do guys i think that's pretty much us we're gonna to have to wrap it up for today as always guys thanks so much for listening hopefully we will see you in the next one thanks for watching thanks for listening don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel don't forget to tune in for more podcasts you can always catch me on instagram at ff movement coach and i am f ff underscore nile valentine f f f underscore valentine no, two Fs. Two Fs. FF underscore Valentine. And guys, as always, follow us on social media, on Snapchat. Uh, the Fighting Fit is always uh, popping up, you know, a little bit of content from the goings on in the gym. We also have a new vlog out coming up on YouTube, so make sure to check that out. And as always, guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And again, make sure, you guys, comment below if you if you want to hear more about Flexible Light. And I feel like we could talk a lot talk a lot more about it. We're just kind of a little bit stuck for time right now. And again, anything else that you want to hear about, post in the comments below or get in contact with one of the coaches via any of the range of social media profiles that we have out there. Tell us what you want to hear and we will talk about it, okay? Thanks for listening, guys. And we'll see you in the next one.